Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here in beautiful Vancouver. I'm John Furrier with Rob Strache, breaking down all the action here on theCUBE. We got two great guests talking about Open SSF. Not SSL, <laughs> my mind goes there immediately. <laughs> <laughs> got two great guests, Omakar Aris Tom, General Manager of Open SSF, and Brian Bellendorf, C CTO of Open SSF. Uh, CUBE alumni, great to have you guys on. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. I know you got a keynote to give, top of the hour. Thanks for coming on, appreciate it. My All right, pleasure. Thank the, you. the Security Foundation, super important, funded, up and running. I saw your talk at Cloud Native SecureCon, security's top of mind. Security and AI are like the two hot major pistons pushing a lot of change in open source. We're feeling it everywhere. Obviously, AI will get later, but security right now is top of mind. What's on the agenda for SSF? What's, who's involved, who's funding it, what's happening? Well, the uh, OpenSSF.org website has all of our great funders, the premier members, all the way down to uh, some of our public sector friends as well. Um, we're interested in really ensuring that our software supply chain is secure for the benefit of the public good, and that's our mission statement. As we look forward, there's a number of initiatives that we have underway to help ensure that we realize that goal. We've made a number of great accomplishments over the last few months, and I'll probably turn to Brian for some specific details because this is day 10, yeah. and yeah. I don't know everything yet. <laughs> What's the, just on the history, when was it founded? What's the starting point? When, how long has it been in existence? Brian, did you want to take that? Yeah. Sure, uh, so the project really got its start in 2020 uh, as a coming together of a whole bunch of initiatives that kind of touched on the security of open source code and the software supply chain mm -hmm. after things like so the solar winds hack, that sort of thing. And then it, in 2021, we pivoted to kind of a funded operation to allow us to go and be a bit more bold about our initiatives, tell the world about it, but organize ourselves into broader themes. Uh, and we looked like geniuses because a few months later, Log4J had a little bit of a problem that yeah. ruined a whole lot of people's winter holidays. But that really helped crystallize for us what yeah. we had to go out there and do uh, in terms of not just, I mean, try to find the next Log4J would be perfect, you can't do that. But you can go, what are the risks out there and how do we address those risks and drain risk, risk from the open source ecosystem as a whole. Making software secure, the North Star, get the mission. What are some of the challenges you guys are addressing right now? What's on the plate? What's, what's the current goals? What are you guys doing right now? What's the priorities? So, some of the areas that I would like to see the organization lean in and some of the areas where we've had some great progress, I think Alpha Omega has done some great work and the idea behind Alpha Omega is that we catch both the most used open source programs on the Alpha side and then we raise tide on security issues on the Omega side. And they've made some great strides in some of the automated scanning work that they've done as well as providing grants through the Alpha side for organizations like the Python Foundation in order to secure supply chain. I think we've also done a bunch of great work when it comes to um, SigStore, to SBOMs, to areas such as that which will provide the base foundation and structure to allow us to do more secure things. S-bombs on their own aren't going to fix our problems, <laughs> but they give us telemetry. We went that all day yesterday, yeah, actually. Say, that, that's <laughs> been a common. Do, do you work across with other organizations like the CD Foundation had their discussion of CD events mm -hmm. yesterday, for instance, and how does that tie into what OpenSSF is doing? Brian, did you want sure. to? Sure, um, so organizationally, there's a lot of overlap. Obviously, being a, all of us in the Linux Foundation really helps at the staff level. We share a lot of right. knowledge and understanding of who folks are, but there's actually on the ground a lot of developers who are part of each community who bring ties with them, right? So, for example, uh, uh, there's a tough uh, TUF, which is the uh, the, the, the unified uh, framework for security that has been a, a CNCF and a, and, a, and a CDF project, uh, and that uh, is now something that SigStore builds on top of uh, and Salsa references to try to pull together the, these different aspects of security in the software supply chain. So CDF as like the home for continuous delivery is critical to that part of the, the software development life cycle. Uh, lots of other pieces to come together, but, but that is actually one organization in particular that we work closely with. Yeah, I, I think a big piece of it was to, I think to your point, was trying to make sure that S-bombs just don't become a checkbox, yes, I've done it, because, right. I mean, having lived in that world on the IT side myself and, and built out SaaS delivered product, you start to look at the supply chain that you have in the mm -hmm. S-bomb, and as soon as you've gone and produced it, it's out of date, like mm -hmm. an hour later, right. or a day later at, at, at a minimum. It really, it cannot be, I mean, 
there are lots of regulations that are being proposed out there for hardening the software supply chain from various governments, and all yeah. of them put at the top, we've got to have SBOMs, yeah. got to have SBOMs, yes. because yeah. the biggest perception is we don't know what we're running in this infrastructure, and when log, the log for shell breach hit, com governments didn't know when they were done, right, right. in yeah. remediating. A lot of them still aren't done because they don't know where it's been compiled in some jar file somewhere. Um, so an SBOM, in theory, even if it just listed the components that are inside, would have that value. But even just that listing isn't enough. You yeah. want to know, what, are there outstanding CVEs that aren't yet addressed? Uh, yeah. Are there uh, gaps in uh, the build process that, you know, that could lead to problems, not just like Log4J, yeah. but Colors.js and LeftPad and some of these other supply chain attacks that we've seen over time. So. Brian, that's a great point. Oh, go ahead. No, my apologies, I was just going to add to that. If some of the more advanced things that we want to do in terms of supply chain security, if you don't have the visibility as to what went into the recipe, you're yeah. And to your point, it's right. all point in time. We were discussing this with some other colleagues yesterday, and I used an example of, hey, an S-bomb's like a speedometer, and our colleague said, it's even worse, it's a picture of a speedometer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the pie example, too, was a good one on, on stage, but picture of pie, what, what flavor is it? I don't know. Uh, so, this brings up the point about data. So, I love, I think S-bomb is probably one of the most important concepts that's on the table right now for the industry. It's super valuable, everyone can see the concept, I get it. What are the critical factors that need to solve? Is it the data observability, is it marrying it in real time? Is it automation, is it, I mean, is it a data problem? What is the problem space to solve the S-bomb? Yeah. So I, mean, I don't buy the regulation personally, I'm not, <laughs> I, I think too much regulation will slow it down and anchor it and drag it uh, slowly, but what's the core problem space? Because this is super valuable. So I think if we zoom out, and Apologies, I've been in security for 20 years and a lot of these are sometimes rehashed ideas in my opinion. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if we look back to the SANS top 20, or I guess this is now known the CIS top 20, right. number one has been asset management for the last three decades. If we extend that thinking to our assets no longer being servers and laptops and network kit, but also software assets, mm -hmm. that is what the SBOM seeks to address. Do I have a good inventory of the things that are going into my end product? Provided that, I think once we establish that that's important, which is an important beachhead, having consistency in terms of the format, as Brian was saying, to say SBOM, yes, but what format? What metadata should it contain? Is it going to contain my compiler flags? Is it going to tell me about how my compiler was built? All of these things matter when it comes to security. So I think SBOM and establishing that as important is the first part of the journey. But then talking about how that evolves and how the data structures are supported through operational process. Now I know I have Log4j. Now what, what do I do? Do I turn everything off? Well, Brian, what do you think? Yeah, you, I think you said it in, entirely correctly. I think um, uh, there's a term that we're starting to float out there called SBOM liquidity, which is really, <laughs> you know, how do we make sure that this metadata is through the software supply chain captures as many of the different artifacts and aspects of its build, not just for reproducibility, but for verifiability, and ultimately to be able to audit those kinds of processes, to be able to build dashboards that show yeah. you green, yellow, and red, like where are my problem areas? And I think yeah. if we do that, we can turn up, here are the open source components that are underutilized, under, under resourced. Uh, vastly overutilized, but under-resourced, right? That I think Log4j caught a lot of yeah. people by surprise because they had no yeah. idea that they were running it. Can we find those things that, that appear like problem areas and decide, okay, that if we spend 100K to do a third-party audit of that component, we then drain billions of dollars of risk mm -hmm. out of the whole system. Yeah, so, yeah. S-bombs are key, but yeah. it's a structure, it's a vehicle. It's, it's a system, it's, 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 it's got to move from a mechanism to something more I don't want to say organism based, but like something more dynamic yes. of, that could uh, adapt to changing conditions, to whether it's data or some environment. That's, my, like, that's the feeling we're hearing from people is that, how do you talk about that? Because software, they just want to write software how do you secure, I mean, No one wants to do security. Security's <laughs> got to be somebody else's problem, right? You know, like we pay, we pay insurance yeah. companies to worry about like keeping our homes from burning down or something like that. It's like the, 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 the rough mental math that people, most people do and yeah, they'd yeah. rather somebody else did it. I think what we're realizing now, especially in the open source space, is security is everyone's problem. Yeah. But if you don't have the tools to measure it, you don't have the tools to know where the problem areas are or to know when you're improving, you're obviously going to try to write it off and push it to somebody else. Are if you guys in triage tools, mode right now? Because I mean, I can see the demand high for what you guys are doing right now. How do you guys take us through the day in the life of like, you guys get on Zooms or meetings, like, is it like, throwing <laughs> tomatoes at each other? It's like, let's do this problem. <laughs> I mean, you got so many things to work on. Where's the starting point? What's the strategy? How do you guys look at what to take on first? Is there a 
Is there a playbook? It, take us through the... Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I think a lot of it today, and this is why we've got such a great board of directors, a lot of it comes from both the people producing software, the people consuming software, the other foundations, and we get input from everybody. And we then use our industry knowledge as well as their input in order to synthesize what the order of operations are. Now, prior to me coming on, I think Brian did some amazing work with the mobilization plan to help ratify some of that. Did you want to cover off yeah, those priorities? I, I think it's best understood by being kind of a mix of bottoms up and top down. Bottoms up, like every open source community, it's kind of driven by those who show up, right? right. And the people who want to work on interesting stuff have shown up and brought us Sigstore and Salsa and something called the Best Practices Working Group. In fact, that work is kind of organized thematically into a bunch of different areas we have under, under the, the TAC. And then the top down overlay on that is, uh, you know, when log for a shell, hit, the White House asked us, these are some cute experiments, what are you actually doing to solve these problems though? What will it take? Mm -hmm. So that's when we developed um, the mobilization plan which said, here, uh, yeah. top down, like here's minimum viable product offerings in 10 different directions that we think, again, drain risk out of the software ecosystem. Not just open source, but everybody's software. And that's been a useful guide to think about what areas should we go into next, where could we pull some resources to tackle this or that. Uh, uh, we'll be updating that plan. We're also building a, an overarching architecture, if you will, for how these disparate pieces really fit together into the tool chains of the world. In fact, one example of this is GitHub has recently adopted some, uh, uh, something called NPM Provenance, which pulls together SigStore, Salsa, and a few other pieces to allow you to have full, verifiable traceability for your NPM package back to the root. How okay. are you guys enabling the cross-connect with research? We're seeing at RSA, we covered a lot of uh, independence. MITRE has a group in, it in Cambridge, Massachusetts. They're funded, nonprofit to go in and look at a lot of security, kind of in the battlefield of what's happening, try to get the data. Are they involved? You got, I know Amazon's involved, you got the big cloud players. Now you got other companies that like Discover here that are called end users. Like, I mean, I guess they're called end users, but they're companies yeah. too. Mm -hmm. they're, they're deploying yeah. open source. What's the makeup of the, the key personas and how do you guys thread for the folks watching that might be independent research, academic to? Yeah. Um, so one, yeah. I mean, as Brian mentioned, being an open source organization. More participants, the better. We welcome participants helping along and helping to guide our decisions and helping to provide us input. Personally, the way that I categorize the different actors in our use cases, I think of people producing software, such as the Googles yeah. and the Microsofts and the Amazons of the world. Mm -hmm. I think about, you call them end users, we have an end user work group <laughs> with the Citibanks and the JP Morgans and the Capital Ones of the world. I think about our public sector as well. Our governments are deeply involved with ensuring that the direction they're providing their citizens, be they domestically here in the US, I know we're in <laughs> Vancouver, <laughs> um, or North abroad, America. North, America. North America, <laughs> or, or abroad, they want to seek input because they recognize that this can only be done through public-private partnership. And then last but not least is the research, be it from academia or peer security researchers in their classical sense. I think we do need to take on input from all these stakeholders. So you're open for business for anyone, basically. Pardon me? You're open for business for anyone We're to come in. We're open for business, yeah. and I think the ideal state that I would like to get to, and I think Brian as well, <laughs> um, to achieve that goal of securing our supply chain for the greater good, is I want to get out of mosquito swatting. And I want to get to the point that we have the proverbial citronella lamps everywhere. Yeah. And by that I mean actually ensuring security software, that's secure by design. I identify as a software engineer that's been doing security for 20 years. I'm inherently lazy. I want the defaults to be secure. I want it to be very difficult to be insecure. And for anyone that's tried to use the borrow checker in Rust, this is the perfect example of that. But I want to enable that more broadly so things like memory safety are just there. Yeah. We don't have to think about that. The cloud infrastructure as code has proven that developers can program the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. This is super valuable and it's a great initiative. For the last minute we have left, could you guys share real quick a plug, each of you, for what you're looking for, audience out there, what you're looking for in terms of support, engagement, uh, put a pitch in or plug for the organization. What would you like to share for the audience? We'll start with Mokar, go with you first. We can only build secure software for the greater good if we all participate. So I'd encourage everyone to participate. OpenSSF.org is where you can find more information about how to participate. 
Brian, what would you add? Brian, I'd say it down. to all the developers out there, we've got a, a tremendous number of resources on the OpenSSF website that you can use to be a better developer, to write more secure code, come and consume it, and to all of their bosses out there, give your developers the time and opportunity to do that. I know adding features, fixing bugs are priorities, but you've got to pay off the technical debt, you've got to do the hard security work, or you'll be the next log for shell. This is a super important initiative. I mean, security is now, has to have the guardrails. They got to put it, to, they got to make the developers more productive. Everyone's shifting left as we we're talking about at KubeCon and CloudNativeCon, Rob. So it's a good time. Yes. Yeah, no, I, I think this is great. And I think it's, like you said, it, it has to get out of the swatting mosquitoes mm -hmm. aspect of it. And I think this is great that you're putting a roadmap basically together to help these companies get there, so. Yeah, thanks Great for stuff. coming on. Brian, real quick, I know you got a keynote you're going to walk to right now. What's it going to be on? Obviously security, give a quick plug for the talk you're it, giving. It's about baking uh, security in the defaults and the tools that developers use. How do we make it so like, when a developer falls out of bed, they do it securely? Awesome. Omakar, great to meet you. Brian, Likewise. great to see you. Cube yes. alumni here. Thank this is a Cube coverage in beautiful Vancouver. Our, our view at our office is beautiful. We showed you the shot. We're looking at the ocean and the mountains. It's beautiful. This is the Cube getting all the action here. The Open Source Summit 23. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back. <laughs>